Hi folks, this is a video specifically intended for Linux users uh, and those using Obstudio. So many of you may have struggled with this problem. You're trying to find VST plugins to do equalization, compression, whatever. They're obviously very well advertised under Windows and they're running with DLLs. The problem you sit with is that, well, this that I've had is I can't find any way for them to actually work inside Ob Studio. So, you know, like here, for example, on the screen, you'll see I've got Reaper. Reaper does run fine on Linux. It runs on its own. And you can see here, if you look, there are VST plugins. And I mean, you can add various of the different VST plugins to work. And you've also got on Linux Audacity, which is also a very, very good audio recording tool along with also various plugins and so on. So either of these would be perfect to use. The problem is that neither of these two applications either can I find a way that they can output their audio into the input on Obstudio. In other words, that you could have Reaper running in the foreground or Audacity and it be feeding the audio in live into Obstudio. Obviously what many people are doing is they are recording maybe their Audacity or Reaper track separately and then syncing it later on and merging it into Obstudio or into their final recording so that they're using that soundtrack in place of their other soundtrack. But the problem with that is it is a two, three, four stage process. You know, I was looking for something that would be a little bit quicker that I could make use of. So, okay, Reaper aside there. So these two are not working for me, although they're actually excellent applications. Uh, neither Audacity and, and Reaper were going to be doing it for me. So if you look at something like, say, Ob Studio, typically where we've got a, a sound input here, we do have a couple of filters we can use. And I mean, these two are working fairly well for me at the moment, the noise suppression filter and the compressor. So no issues there. But say, for example, now I wanted to do equalization or one or two of the other things that, that you are finding VST plugins for. Well, they're not there. So... I've been looking around and trying to find what on earth I could do. And, you know, as usual, the same thing happened to me the other day. Sometimes you must maybe just look for a simpler solution, actually. So what I did find was, was Pulse Effects. Pulse Effects is an application that is installed or can be installed. It's in most of the repo Linux repositories on most of the distros. You can just install it and use it. And typically people are using it or maybe using it already in 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 its output format where it's processing to the speakers and you're enhancing sound as part of your output. But what it does equally well is it will also process for input like here for microphone uh, up at the top left over here. So before I get onto you know some of what it does over here, you can just have a look here. It is possible to change its look and feel. So I've got it, for example, now starting up as a service in the background whenever I boot Linux. Uh, you can, I'm not worrying about the outputs at the moment. I'm saying process all inputs. So that'll be, if I've got one or two other audio input formats, I've got dark themes set. You can set here for its priority as well in terms of how quickly it responds, if there's a bit of lag or delay. And I'm actually finding there is a little bit of delay. I am quite figured out how to do it. I've been trying with real time. But yeah, maybe I'll still get that right. I just want to share really what I found out so far and I'll be welcome to receive any further comments and input in the in the comments to this video. Maybe I have missed something. On the spectrum side, you can just define also how the spectrum at the top looks. You know, the color, gradients, border, what else was there? The sampling, you, you can actually adjust this as well if you want a coarser sampling or even a finer sampling. And then, of course, for pulse audio, you can define what specific inputs you want to make use of. And I see there is actually the latency. That's interesting. Maybe that's what I should have played with, actually. And, yeah, I think you can blacklist certain sources and so on as well over there. But let's demo some of these, actually, to say you can also hear the effect. So I've got Equalizer on here at the moment. And this one was just working fairly well for me, actually. So... I've sort of left it where it is, but let's just, by way of example, just, just listen to my audio now as I'm busy speaking, and I can just turn this one up, and you can hear if you've got your monitor on, 
you'll be able to hear when you're recording how it's actually affecting your sound as you're busy speaking. So you can play around with these settings until you get the sound to sort of sound, you know, the way that you actually want the sound to sound. So specifically for me, the equalizer is the one I was looking for. I wanted to enhance the trebles just slightly. I just found the microphone was just a little bit on the on the bassy side. And there's a lot of things you can play around with here. Uh, the funny one, of course, is pitch. So you can just turn pitch on like that, and you'll hear instantly a sound of probably a little bit younger at the moment. But you can also adjust the sound the other way as well if you want to change the you know the pitch or the sound of your your voice that you normally record with this is one way of doing it actually and that's so that's pitch you've got obviously reverb as well um, with some presets like tunnel or a medium sized room that you're standing in, if that's the case. And yeah, you've got filters here, a DSA as well that you can set, a limiter. The WebRTC is quite interesting. The WebRTC is often used with streaming of video and audio th to the internet through web browsers. And you've got from noise suppressors that you can turn on and off here. A voice detector and that will probably be to switch it on and off. Uh, you've also got a compressor over here that you can adjust, a gain controller and a different uh, settable echo canceller as well. So lots of things there to, to, to look at. Multiband gate, single gate and I think I already showed uh, the compressor. I'm not using this compressor because I'm already using the one in Ob Studio. But again, you can play around with them. You can activate both and, you know, sort of see what sort of difference it makes, actually. So, yeah, that's basically pulse effects. It's not too complicated, but it's a, it's it's taking the input from your microphone before it gets into Ob Studio. So it's just one way of maybe managing a few of these things. If you don't find it in Ob Studio, and instead of running things that you've got to run, you know, two or three passes through this, maybe just a quick and neat way of actually getting it done. One other thing I can just show around pulse effects. I haven't tested it too much myself yet, but over here, top on the top uh, bar, the test signals. You can generate, you can generate test sounds like sine wave and square wave sounds and white noise and all this sort of thing. Uh, maybe if I just turn that down a bit. Oops. Okay. Sorry about that. It's a bit loud. Um, but you can you can play around with the frequency that the type of sound being being generated and you can pick up how your microphone is receiving that in real time as well. So that's quite interesting just to look at the spectrum uh, analysis of the sound coming through to your microphone. And then also over here, if you click on the little microphone symbol, this is another interesting one. It'll measure it can measure the noise and it can try and subtract the noise to clean up the signal as well. So let me just try that. I'll click here on measure noise and obviously stop speaking. So there it's measured the noise. And I could click on subtract noise. In effect, that's supposed to help cancel out uh, noise. Now this could be useful for noise on a specific part of the spectrum where first of all here you'd be able to see it. So you could even maybe just equalize it out. But you could otherwise also just you know, play around with this thing a little bit and see if it if it does anything interesting for you, really, I think. And I think, yeah, that's actually just a bypass button. You can completely bypass pulse effects uh, quickly if you need to, without having to individually take these off. Of course, you you most people will know that the order that the filters are applied in can make a difference. So using these up and down arrows over here, you'd move your your filters up or down in their particular order. And then just remember also that whatever you're doing here is happening first on the microphone. So what you've got, oops, what you've got set as, sorry, what you've got set as filters on your Ob Studio microphone is always going to then be following what's happened on pulse effects. So if there's something that needs to happen first 
or should I say, yeah, first or second, you might just have to bear that in mind that anything that's set over here is going to be happening after the the other one. And uh, yeah, if you in Ob Studio, if you're playing around with the sound, you may just want to turn on your monitor, which you do over here. If that's your input for your microphone, you would click on monitor and output, and then you at the same time be able to hear in your headphones what sort of sounds and effects you know, that, that, that's actually having on your audio. But yeah, this is the quick and dirty way for me really of maybe just easily doing it in Linux then. Uh, if anybody has got any other easy suggestion for how VST plugins, those Windows DLLs can work under Ob Studio, uh, I'll be very happy to hear. At the moment, like I said, they work fine in Reaper and other things, but I don't, I'm not at this stage too keen. Well, I haven't tried it. Maybe I must start looking at it. If I, you know, that would still require me then to record a separate track and to merge it later on. Um, and I know many people are doing that. It might be worth looking at. Just that if you are looking for something as a sort of a single phase process, then this is maybe something just worth thinking about. It's quick and easy. It works on most Linuxes. And um, yeah, there you go. So, okay, that's all I really wanted to share. I just didn't find any easy help anywhere else. So I thought I'll make a quick video on it. And maybe if other people are trying to find the same solution, then... They can find this video and I hope it helps them. Anyway, enjoy your day further then and I'll catch you in the next video.